name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless me, Father. It has been too long since my last switch killing. It's confession time again. Yes, I've been on the straight and narrow for too long. And it's about time there was a bit of destruction. I don't know when I attempted my last switch fix. I'd say it must be at least a year now, I'm thinking. So, uh, yeah, I decided to buy myself another one because I do have some switch spares. So hopefully it might be something that I've already got a part to fix on this one here. Now, I bought it for e from eBay. I think the price was actually OK. I'm not sure if the price is finally coming down to a more sensible level. It was £85 plus £6 postage, so £91. Now, I know that sounds a lot, but you actually get the charger and the dock included. And I'm pretty sure the charger is going to be... £20 all day long and I'm pretty sure the dock is probably going to be 20 or maybe £30 all day long so there's no Joy-Cons with it but I thought that was actually a fair enough price. Now it says the screen's in perfect condition because it's got a screen protector on but this worried me slightly here. Look at that picture there Look at that big round thing there. I wonder, has it had some sort of impact and that's bled on the inside? Or is that just a perfect reflection? I've been trying to look closely at it to see what sort of reflection that could be and I can't make it out. It looks like somebody's rested a hot drink on it. So I don't know what's going on there. So it'd be interesting to see the inside of it. But let me just show you what it says. Nintendo Switch for spares repair does not power on. Screen has had a protector on since day one and is in perfect condition, so I'm hoping it will be. We'll leave protector on for sale. Comes in original box with original dock and USB-C charger. Are uh, all in full working condition. No idea if it's easily repairable or not. You take the risk if you bid on the auction. No Joy-Cons included. So, isn't it going to be an interesting one? Now, let's uh, open this up. Oops, they managed to get a perfect size bag to fit this. Ready? Yes, excellent. Right, so it was just obviously a big reflection. Now let's have a little look here. All right, bit of a scuff there. But it looks looks okay. No micro SD card. Any game? Have I been lucky? No, no game. Right, okay, let's uh is it gonna turn on? Mm, don't think so, can't see any backlight. Pins look well I'd have to look closely, but uh initially they kind of look okay, I think. Right, let's uh, take it over to the blue mat. Let's plug it into a little USB char uh, amp charger thing and see what it's drawing. Oh, now it's been so long. I wonder if any of the knowledge is any of the knowledge that I gained is still there, or has it all disappeared? Knowledge just seems to go into my head, and then if it's not used, it just disappears again, like instantly. So uh, not great. Oh, nothing. Oh yes, yes, something. Right, hmm, okay. That's not really telling me anything. I don't think. From memory it goes up to like 30 something and then it goes off and turns itself on at one point whatever amps, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, something like that amps. So it is charging a little bit, isn't it? Let's try it the other way around. Doing the same that way around. So maybe the USB C port is not faulty. Let's hold the power button down now for a good six or seven seconds. I want to see if that goes to zero. Yes, it did, didn't it? Yeah, okay, let go. Is it going to climb back up or not? No, it's not, and it's not coming on. Right. Let's uh, unplug it, plug it in again, see if it goes up to 0.2. Yeah, it does. Right, well, let's take it apart. Who knows, it might be might be water damage because even if you need to remember that the uh, person selling it on eBay might not be the actual person using it and a child won't always be honest, will they? Which is understandable on an expensive item. Right, little tri-wing 
screws at the back here and then little crosshead screws here. They all appear to be in place, so maybe this hasn't been taken apart before. Well, while I'm taking it apart, I'm just going to give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive, who are the top level Patreons. And this month they are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Local Auto Sales, DJVG, I'm just getting a Crosshead screwdriver now for the other screws. Tobias Hennig and lastly, Robert from Timsey Auto Air. Right, okay, nice bit of dust there, nice bit of dust here, and it doesn't seem to have any fingerprints on it. I'm not sure if this has been opened. I might be lucky on this one here. I mean, look at that, uh, look at that dust across there. Yeah. Right, a load more crosshead screws here. Right now, let's have a look. Water damage, yes or no? Yes or no? Here goes. No, no water damage there. Yes. Brilliant, right, okay. It's just getting better and better, isn't it? Now let's have a zoom in and have a close look. First impressions are okay. What's that there? What's that weird thing there? I think that's just an imperfection from uh, the factory. That's just dust. Uh, I can't see any damage whatsoever, which is great. So first things first, let's measure the voltage on the battery in case the battery's failed. Oh, feels quite good doing one of these again. I always say that, don't I, when I do one of these? Right, what we got? 2.6 volts. Okay, that is uh, very low because it's a 3.7 volt battery, but fully charged it would be 4 point something. But it's not completely dead. Let's pop that out. I wonder if I was to get, just get a working battery, would it turn on? Yeah, 2.6 volts. Uh, should I do that first or should I have a quick check for shorts around the capacitors around this chip here? Because often it's this chip that fails. You know, if you were to put in a third party power supply. Right, so I'm just on continuity so I can zoom in now. You'll hear the meter beep when there's a short. Here goes. They're all okay so far. Hmm, they're all okay. Right, let's go to, let's check this little fuse here. Ooh, no, that's okay, you can see between here and here. Uh, so nice not to have water damage. Let's check around here, just use this as a ground. I think they're all resistors, aren't they? Right, okay. Uh, no, it's not going to be, well, it could be, but there's no shorts around this chip or this chip here. Right, I've found a working battery. Excuse the look of it, it does actually have the uh, correct voltage look. There and there. 4.1 volts, yep, yeah, so that's uh, that sample. Let's plug that in and see what it does. Okay, so now, and that goes there. That is the right way, isn't it? Yeah. Now let's get our little charger thing again and see if it's behaving any differently. 
Right, that's more like it. Let's see if it goes to zero and tries to turn on. No. Ooh. Do you know what I'm thinking now? That this might not be fixable unless there's something to do with the video chip on the other side. So that says to me that it is now is now charging. So this battery has just gone really, really flat. If I probably left it plugged in for hours, it probably would build up the voltage. Let's try turning it on and see if anything happens. No, no backlight. Don't think so. Right, let's hold it down, see if it goes to zero. No, it hasn't, has it? No, okay, right. Let's take this out completely. And, oh look, it's gone to, why has it gone to that? It's gone to 11 now. Hmm. Oh, maybe because it's fully charged. Yeah, it might be because it's fully charged. Let's take the board out and see if we can see any damage on the other side. There might be uh, obvious damage on that side of the board. I'm just closing each of the lids when I take off any of these connectors because they're really easy to knock off. And once they're knocked off, you've had it. Because they're extremely hard to get back on and normally they break. I was just thinking about the dock, but there's no point in putting it on the dock because it's not turning on, is it? So it's not getting to uh, the high enough amps to turn it on. You know what? This hasn't been apart before because look at this foam and stuff up here. I think I'm the first one in here. This is my most hated part, the uh, screen ribbon cable connector. Okay. You know what we should do before we take it any further? Let's plug the battery back in and let's see now that we've got the screen and this unplugged, uh, let's see because the screen could have been putting a fault on the line. Let's see now if it's gonna try to turn on. In case anybody's interested, I mentioned my golf tournament before, my online golf tournament. Not in the real world, just in the uh, online. Uh, I lost, annoyingly. So uh, yeah, I lost, lost a bet on the GTA, on the uh, PGA Tour. I was not bad, it was 12 points down over the whole tour, which is not really much when you consider, I don't know how many how many uh, matches there were in it, 15 or something? So, uh, and 18 holes in each match, so I didn't do too, too, too bad. I think we're gonna move on to snooker next. Just see if it's gonna go to zero. No, right, okay. Right, we are free. I'm just going to clean off this thermal paste so it doesn't get all over my mat and me. Right, let's see anything on this side. Well, so far, it all looks perfect. Set my meter to continuity again. Weird, meter stopped working. One minute. Looks like the leads have gone. Bad connection here, listen. Right, okay, uh, mind you, it was beeping on the other side. So let me just repair that. 
No, it may look a bodge job when I've got all the tape on it, but it is actually uh, uh, soldered and then glue guns and then heat shrinked and then taped up after all that. And I'm reusing the tape, that's how good I am. I kid a thousand switches a year, but yeah, I reuse tape. I like to offset the damage I do, you see, with the amount of tape that I save. Excellent, right, okay. Back to where we were. Now I can't see these filters make, uh, actually causing it to fail, but I'm just gonna test them. So there's continuity that side, continuity that side, but look, there's not continuity from side to side. So it needs to be connected from here to here. You can see the trace goes down here. So that needs to go from there to here, and that needs to go from there to here, but not shorten in the coil itself. They are okay. I'll be honest with you, I'm starting to lose a little bit of hope because I was hoping that it was just gonna be the chips on the other side or this video chip here. So I'm just gonna go across the capacitors to see if anything is showing a short that might give me an idea. Not all of these are capacitors. That there looks like a capacitor, but that's probably an inductor. Same here, that's probably an inductor there. In fact, I think this is a backlight circuit because it looks very similar to the uh, one on the Nintendo Switch Lite. Hmm. Right, this is under the CPU, so lots of these are going to be short in anyway. Weirdly, right now they're not shorting. Yeah, now that one there, that looks like a capacitor, but look, that's shorting, but that's an inductor. This is all looking perfect, isn't it? Inductor, it's a cap, cap, cap. Right, there is, at this moment in time, it all looks really good. What is causing this? Right, what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna put the battery back in it and I'm gonna push down on the CPU here, or APU, uh, to see whether or not it, uh, I wonder, has it been dropped? Is it a cracked solder board or something? There we go, that's not gonna flex on that bit there. So, pressure down now, and plug it in. Let's see if it does anything different. No, I thought it would have gone to zero by now. No, don't think it's that. Wait, well, is anything getting warm? No. I am going to run out of options very soon. Uh, I could plug it into my PC, see if it's recognised as a Nintendo Switch, just in case it's got some weird sort of RCM on it or something, you know, when they've been hacked. Let's have a look under here.
Again, it just looks perfect. Right, so I'm just going to use that and that and plug this into uh, my PC, see if it's recognised at all. Alright, this is potentially annoying. Right, watch this. PC here, Windows, yeah. When I plug in my switch, which hasn't been messed around with, like, you know, uh, hacked. Watch this now. It will turn itself on and then it will come up down here, setting up Nintendo Switch. Can you see that? Yeah. It's recognised as a Nintendo Switch. Watch what happens. Nintendo Switch is set up and ready to go. Watch what happens when I do this one here. You ready? Here goes. Setting up APX. Now I don't know what APX is, but I've just Googled Nintendo Switch APX and every single result so far is to do with, you know, Tegra this or hacks this or patch switch this, that and the other. So uh, yeah, right now this is the problem I've got. This is why I hate stuff like this. Is this faulty because it's got a hardware issue on here? There you go, APX is set up and ready to go. Is it faulty because something's gone on here? For example, that charge chip there, that one up there, although there's no shorts around it, I've had it once in the past where it was still faulty. So I could swap that out and then it might fix the problem. Or is this to do with some, because something's been done incorrectly when it's been hacked and now this is bricked because it's like, soft, you know, like software bricked. Uh, that's the annoying thing. Why was it sold? Was it sold because they tried to hack it and got it wrong? Or was it sold because it's been hacked for a year and it's been working perfectly, then failed? If that case, then it's a hardware issue and then I might be able to get it sorted. So I'm battling two problems now. The main main problem for me is that I don't know anything about hack switches. I bought this paperclip thing years ago from eBay. This is just a 3D printed one. And this is, instead of using the paperclip down the side rail, you use this. I've never looked into it because the thing is, it's not something that really interests me and it's going to take me so long to learn. And that's annoying. I just want to mess around with the chips and try to fix it. I don't want to get involved in software side of things. So now I don't know what to uh, do. I mean, I could message the seller, but they're going to feel uncomfortable about saying anything, aren't they? You know, they didn't say it in the listing. So I don't think they're really going to say, I don't think they're really going to tell me what's, uh, what's what. So what do I do with this now? Okay, so I've been doing my research into RCM. I'll show you that in a minute. While I was doing that, this has now been charging up for, I don't know, about an hour and a half or something. So let's see if we have a higher voltage here. And then I'm going to unplug this and see if we, uh, if the voltage remains 3.7. So you can see now it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nearly there, isn't it? So it's definitely taking a charge. Let's unplug this. I've just got tissue behind it because I didn't want anything to short anywhere. 3.6, I think, and it's holding. I think that will be, I think that battery will be okay. I mean, it's, it's dropping a bit there, but yeah, I think I think that's going to be all right. Normally when the battery goes low, I mean, maybe it's suffered a bit of damage because it's dangerous for batteries to go too low, but I think in this instance, we're going to be okay. Now, this is interesting. So, I messaged the seller and I wasn't being, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm happy with the price I paid for this anyway. I do this for videos, not to, not to make a living out of having to make money on the actual items. So I just got in touch and I said that uh, I'm happy with it, happy with the price of it. Uh, could you just save me a lot of time and tell me the background of the switch? It looks to me as if it has possibly be, uh, got a problem with the software because of a failed hack hacking attempt. And the uh, seller got back straight away and says, this has not had any hacks whatsoever on it. It just didn't turn on one day, didn't charge and didn't turn on one day. But watch this, check this out now. So on this uh, tablet here, let me just make a little bit of room. On this tablet here, I've got this Tegra RMC. Now, 
I watched a video by Andrew Paul. You all know Andrew Paul if you've watched my YouTube Fixes video because he's the one that did the HDMI patch for, it was the PlayStation, wasn't it? Yeah, the PlayStation 4. So uh, I watched one of his videos and he had a switch that came to him where I think another repair shop or something had basically changed out loads of different chips on it and it still wasn't working. Still the same as what you've seen today. Black screen, charging at X, you know, whatever it is, but yet there's no sign of life anywhere. And uh, yeah, he basically said it's an RCM problem. Check this out. So if I go into here, you see here, it says no RCM, yeah. When you plug in a switch that has RCM, it will go to green. Now, let me just plug in a switch that hasn't got RCM. Right, so let's plug this into here. Now, Nintendo Switch here, no RCM, because this one hasn't been hacked, yeah? It says no RCM there. Now, check this out. Plug this into here, and look what happens. RCM okay. So, 100%, there's no arguing there, this switch has been hacked. Yeah, RCM okay. So I think what's happened is, I think the person I'm speaking to is probably the dad, and I think one of his kids, if he has kids, uh, has done this without the uh, without the parents knowing. Which you know, like uh, you've got to admire that in a way, haven't you? Because it's something that's quite technical. So uh, yeah, uh, so it's uh, it's it's a hacked switch. Now I'm going to try and get it back to normal by downloading a payload. I've got to do a payload and inject it into here, and then I'm going to try to disable auto RCM so it can just be used as a normal switch. Okay, so I've put thermal paste on. I haven't put the back screws on, but yeah, I've done up all the screws and everything like that. So let's uh, see now when we inject a payload whether anything's gonna happen. Let's plug this into here. So I suppose the telling thing there was when I plugged it into the PC at the very, when I uh, thought about RCM, it came up with APX, not Nintendo Switch. So, that is the sort of giveaway then, isn't it? It must be. Right, okay, let's uh, go to this payload here. Right, that's there. There you go, it's on. RCM device with ID, blah, 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 blah. Smashing the stack, it's on. So now what I have to do is, uh, I have to, how do I control this now? Is it the buttons here? Yes, it is. I want to go to uh, tools. How do I actually enter? Let me try doing the power button. Yes, okay. Right. Uh, restore backup verification options auto RCM. Press the power button. I oh, know. Oh, here we go. Fail to initialize EMMC. No, I want to. I want to turn off auto RCM. So what do I do there? Fix archive, fix uh, dump package. Right, I'm gonna watch Andrew's video again because he showed how to do that. Bear with me. Right, it's the next day and I've been trying to mess around with this here now. I have managed to get it in here. If you have a look here now, you can see launch. But if I go to try to go into it, then it just keeps coming up with a message that it can't initialize the E M M C up here, yeah? So, uh, also if you watch this now, if I was to go into console info and then go to E M M C, you can see here, fail to I N I T, initialize I suppose, E M M C. So basically, as far as I can see, the EMMC has failed. This is one off another switch. Now, when I put this one from another switch in, it does read it, but yet, obviously, it's not linked to this switch here. So, this item here has gone faulty. So let me just power this down. And now I'm gonna disconnect the battery, and I'm gonna take this one out thing is this looks absolutely perfect so I don't think it's the fact that it's got a bad capacitor on it or solder balls on uh, in here I think it's been corrupted and that's why it's failed so 
I can't see, you know, like this uh, This is one of those eBay buys, isn't it, where uh, you don't get to hear about the history of it. Whether the seller or not knows, who knows, but uh, 100% this has been there, uh, this has been hacked. No doubt about that, because you can see when I plug it into here that it recognises it as the uh, RCM. So now, when I do it this way, because it's a different EMMC, I then have to uh, plug in the little jig into the right hand one here. I have to hold down the volume up and tap the power button to now turn it on in like the RCM mode. And then I can plug it in here. See, this one has the auto RCM enabled. You can enable it on this one as well. So now let's go to inject payload and watch what will happen now. It says here, package two decryption failed, package one, package two mismatch, or old, uh, the name of the system. Hikati, Hitaki, not too sure. Anyway, uh, if I go here, and then if I go to console info, you can see if I go to this one now, it comes up with it. So it's not reading this one here. I mean, I could try to put flux under it and heat it up, but uh, I can't see how that would make any difference. Watch this, if I now go into here, and go to, because normally when you go to launch here and go into this one, it should bring up the normal switch menu. It's just that it will be jailbroken, but here it's not doing that. You see there, it's failing to launch because of the mismatch. Reflowed really easy, and I did tap it quite, <laughs> like tap that quite a lot. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not going to make a difference, I'm sure of it, but let's just put it back in and see. Da, 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 da. What's it going to do? Come on. No, of course you're not going to work. Right, that is it. I'm not messing with this anymore. Let's just try to get something working on this. Let me look into Android or something. Well, it's only been a few seconds later, but just in case this is of any use for possibly a revisit video, you can see here when I look at the fuses, this 15 burnt fuses, uh, and the HOS version is 12.0.2 plus. So I don't know if that suggests that it might be a, a very recent thing that's gone wrong because when I've been watching videos I'm sure the fuses were a lot less than that so maybe this has only just gone wrong now well hopefully next time you see this it will be of some use I am now finished and I've got Android 10 working on here. Let me just show you the hoops that you have to run through to get it up and running. So, first of all, you need to plug it in there. You need to inject something into it. So you're gonna to have to have a different device to inject something into it. Now it's come up with RCM okay there. I'm gonna inject the payload like you've seen before. And now we don't need this anymore. So we can unplug this. Again, it comes up with 40 EMMC. Now I've gotta to go to more configs. And this time I now have switch root Android 10. So click on here. Now this is the first kind of annoyance. It does actually take quite a while to get into it. Now obviously this is still being developed and maybe in a year or two it will work really, really well. Apparently it works much better than it did before. Things like the Joy-Cons work, which is pretty amazing. If I'm honest with you, I personally won't be using this. It's just a finish to the video to show uh, a working product when it wasn't working to begin with. But there you go, you can now see it there. And if you have a look here at the right analog sticks and you see the cursor moving, which is, uh, which is pretty nice. Yeah. So let me just do a tiny bit of gameplay. You can do apparently things like uh, the PSP emulator will work. 
so the PPSSPP emulator will work. Also RetroArch as well. Now I did download these things, but then I struggled actually getting the games onto it. It is possible because people are doing it on YouTube, but I can't show you any emulators working. So let me just show you a good old Beach Buggy Racing, which is uh, a game that you can download for uh, for free on Android. Right, so you can see there, left and right, and that one will be brake and also reverse. Crab. So I think if you've got the emulator set up, then it really would have a bit of a use because it's a nice big colourful screen. The Joy-Cons are a complete winner. You know, having something attached to it with Joy-Cons here are definitely a winner. So I think as this gets more and more developed, I think in uh, maybe another so many months or a year, it could really be a viable thing. I think a lot of the time people just put Android on here as well as having their Switch working because you can have them both working independently off, uh, off each other. In my instance here, I can't get the switch to work. I can only get it to work for, uh, on Android, which is of course better than nothing, but still not really, uh, not really usable. Uh, in my opinion, that is anyway. If you do know a way to get the original switch software back on here without having the original keys, then let me know because I have got spare memory modules, the EMMC that you've seen earlier. So if there was a way I could somehow put some sort of generic one on there and then it could take the keys. I mean, that's the problem. It's tied, isn't it, to the main chip and I haven't got the keys. So I think the answer is going to be that you can't do it. But if you know you can do it, please uh, let me know. And then, of course, I can uh, maybe you can point me to a YouTube video or something like that. But uh, yeah, so that is it. Bit of, a, bit of a weird one, this one, but at least I didn't go around changing chips. At least I worked out that it was RCM, which is, uh, you know, which is which is good and I suppose will help other people out. Do I believe the seller knew? Somebody certainly knew somewhere that this was bricked because of having uh, 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 custom firmware on here. So that is it for this video. If you got any enjoyment from it, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Take care, everyone. Stand on the opposite shore Hello, Ramona I reach through mysterious ceilings My only hope I look for the things I don't know Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know